Kira, so now we're going to look at the analysis of our graph and our data, our sample data. It's important that you talk all the time about a sample because that's what you're dealing with. So when we're describing our sample, we here at our school use CSSI, so center and shift, spread, shape and skew, and interesting features. And we use our OSIM obvious um, specific evidence meaning to describe within these particular things. So if you don't know what they are, you can have a look at the um, videos from Dr. Nick. So our paragraph structure in this particular one, we want to have, make sure we cover all our bits and pieces. And we always have to make sure that we talk about our graph. So our first thing in our paragraph is going to say, I noticed that and compare some sort of visual feature, not numbers. The second thing is your evidence for merit. My evidence is, and give the numerical evidence that actually supports your visual comparison. Remember that you have to be comparing things all the time. It's always compare between two groups. And then the last part is this means that, and put some sort of contextual meaning behind what you have just said. And if you find anything interesting, you can add that in at this point too. So you might have a piece of knowledge that you want to put in here. That can be useful for your excellence as well. So if we're looking at this particular graph, which is the amount of money spent in dollars on the formal in 2018. All right. We can see that here's the center. All right. And there's a box. And there's tails. So we're going to talk about this graph in our statements. First one we're going to talk about is the center. So you can see I'm going to be actually worrying about these two lines here, which are the medians. So the median is 200 for this and 310 for this. All right. So I would write something like, I notice that the center of the amount of money spent at the formal by girls is to the right of the center. of the So that's my visual comment. My evidence is that the median amount spent by girls is 310, which is 110 more than the amount spent by boys, which is 200. This means that girls will typically spend more than males. So I'm generalizing here. This makes sense to me as girls would usually buy a dress and have their hair done. They might buy shoes and have their makeup done and possibly other things. Whereas the boys might hire a suit or buy a suit. And they might buy a gift for their partner and that will be it apart from the ticket maybe okay so the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at the spread here we always tend to look at the middle 50% because that's not affected by the ones sticking out the end so the middle 50% tell us a good story about the variation in the data all right so we look to see which one has a more spread out dot plot and also if the 50% box is more spread out or wider so I noticed that the amount spent at the formal by boy, girls is more spread out than the amount spent by boys. I can see the box for the girls is wider than the box for the boys. So it includes the range of the data, so that's right from one end to the other. But my evidence for my box being wider is the interquartile range. So I might show the calculation for this and say that the interquartile range of the amount spent for the formal for girls is 320, the upper quartile minus the lower quartile which is 150 more than the interquartile range spent on the formal by boys, which was 170. What this tells me is there's a lot of more variation in the amount of money spent by girls compared to the amount of money spent by boys. <clears throat> the amount spent at the formal by boys is a lot more consistent. So one would think that might be the case because if they're just hiring a suit, it's likely that they'll all be around the same price. Whereas we know that Dresses for girls can cost anywhere from thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars. So quite a big difference there. And some people not much dollars at all. All right, so I've got one here on the marathon data. This is an NZ grapher. So if you want to have a go at one, you could have a go at this one. Using the data from marathons in New Zealand between 2005 and 2007. I just made that bit up. But that you need a year because that's part of the question. And then you've got two things you can used to split it up here, male and female, younger and older, how many minutes they took in the average stride length. So there you go, have fun.